I'm sure you think Formula One tires are made strictly with rubber. Well, you'd be surprised to hear that it's made with 10 different materials. Stick around to find out what they are and how they're made. But first, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The Ingredients of F1 Tires In case you didn't know, F1 tires are engineered using a combination of natural and synthetic materials, with each playing a critical role in how they perform on the track. It all starts with natural rubber, which is harvested from rubber trees in places like Southeast Asia and South America. Natural rubber provides flexibility, allowing the tire to expand and contract under extreme conditions. But relying only on natural rubber wouldn't be enough, so manufacturers blend it with synthetic rubbers made from petroleum-based chemicals. These synthetic rubbers help improve durability and heat resistance to ensure the tire doesn't wear out too quickly. But to make the tire even tougher, materials like Kevlar and carbon fibers are added. Kevlar, the same material used in bulletproof vests, strengthens the tire while keeping it lightweight. Carbon fibers, which are both strong and light, help maintain the tire's shape at high speeds. Without these reinforcements, the tire would deform too much under pressure, affecting performance. Another crucial element is steel wires, which are also known as beads. These are embedded in the tire to ensure it stays tightly secured to the wheel. Since F1 cars generate massive forces when cornering, the last thing you want is a tire slipping off. Inside the tire, nitrogen gas is used instead of regular air. Why? Because nitrogen is less affected by temperature changes, meaning the tire pressure remains stable throughout a race. Regular air expands and contracts too much when heated, which could cause unpredictable handling. By using nitrogen, engineers ensure that drivers get consistent performance, whether they're racing in the scorching heat of Abu Dhabi or the chilly rain of Silverstone. Designing the perfect tire. Now that you know what F1 tires are made of, let's take a look at how they are made. And it all starts with the design. During this process, the engineers consider multiple factors, including grip, durability, heat resistance, and aerodynamics. Since F1 tires play a massive role in a car's overall performance, even the smallest design flaw could cost a team valuable race positions. The first step in the design process is computer simulations. Engineers use advanced software to predict how different rubber compounds and structures will behave under real-world conditions. They simulate everything from high-speed straights to sharp corners, making sure the tire will perform well under extreme forces. These tests help determine the right mix of materials, the ideal thickness of the tire walls, and even how much heat the tire can withstand before breaking down. Another key consideration is how the tire interacts with the track surface. Because F1 tires don't just roll on the asphalt, they create massive amounts of friction, which heats up the rubber and makes it stick to the track. This phenomenon, called tire degradation, is carefully managed. If a tire is too soft, it will wear out too quickly. If it's too hard, it won't provide enough grip. So engineers must find the perfect balance between durability and performance. Also, different races require different tire types. In dry conditions, teams use slick tires with a smooth surface for maximum contact with the track. But in rainy conditions, they switch to wet tires, which have grooves to channel water away and prevent hydroplaning. Now, the difference in design between dry and wet tires can mean the difference between winning and crashing out. But once the digital models are perfected, it's time to bring the idea to life. Mixing and molding. The mixing and molding process starts in high-tech factories, where all the raw materials like natural rubber, synthetic rubber, Kevlar, carbon fibers, steel wires, and chemical additives are combined to create a rubber compound. This mixture is heated and blended in large industrial mixers until it forms a thick, sticky substance. The next step is molding. The rubber mixture is placed into large molds that shape it into a tire. This is where the tire gets its exact size, thickness, and structural layers. But F1 tires aren't just solid rubber, as they are built in layers, with each layer serving a different purpose. The outer layer provides grip, the middle layers add stability, and the inner layers ensure strength. During this stage, the steel bead wires are embedded inside the rubber to help the tire fit securely onto the wheel. Additionally, the tire is cured by applying high pressure and heat, which bonds the materials together and ensures the tire holds its shape at high speeds. Once this is done, the next step is adding the tread pattern. 
because unlike road car tires, which have deep grooves to handle different road conditions, F1 slick tires are completely smooth. Let's take a look at how this is done. Adding tread patterns. The process of adding tread patterns to F1 tires starts right after the rubber mixture has been prepared and molded into shape. Once the tire takes its basic form, the outermost layer, known as the tread, is carefully designed to meet the specific needs of different racing conditions. For dry weather tires, known as slicks, the process is relatively straightforward. The rubber compound is molded into a completely smooth surface with no grooves. This ensures maximum contact between the tire and the asphalt, providing the best possible grip and performance on a dry track. Since F1 cars rely on extreme levels of traction to navigate corners at high speeds, every bit of surface area counts. The smooth tread allows for more rubber-to-road contact, reducing rolling resistance and increasing speed. However, for wet weather tires, the process becomes more complex. These tires require grooves to efficiently channel water away and prevent hydroplaning. To achieve this, manufacturers use precision molds that imprint deep, strategically placed grooves into the tire's surface. These molds are designed with computer simulations to optimize water displacement, ensuring that the tire maintains grip even on a rain-soaked track. Once the tread pattern is molded in, it's time for the F1 tire to go to the next stage of production. Vulcanization giving the tire its strength. Now, to make an F1 tire race worthy, it goes through a process called vulcanization, which is a high temperature treatment that transforms the rubber into a tougher, more durable material. Think of it like baking a cake. If you mix flour, eggs, and sugar, but don't put them in the oven, you won't get a cake. You'll just have a sticky mess. Similarly, if you don't heat the rubber properly, it won't develop the properties needed for high-speed racing. During vulcanization, the tire is placed in a special chamber where it is heated to temperatures of over 150 degrees Celsius. This heat causes the sulfur in the rubber compound to form strong crosslinks between the rubber molecules, making the tire stronger, more elastic, and heat resistant. But why is this important? Well, in an F1 race, tires are subjected to extreme conditions like rapid acceleration, sudden braking, and high-speed cornering generate enormous friction and heat. Without vulcanization, the rubber would break down too quickly, leading to loss of grip and potential tire failures. Another key benefit of vulcanization is that it helps the tire maintain its shape under pressure. When an F1 car is speeding down the track at over 200 miles per hour, the centrifugal force tries to stretch the tire outward. Thanks to the vulcanization process, the rubber remains firm, preventing deformation that could affect the car's handling. Once the tire has gone through this crucial heat treatment, it's left to cool down slowly, ensuring that all the chemical bonds settle properly. Then, after cooling, the tire is ready for the next critical stage. Testing the tires. Before an F1 tire makes it to the racetrack, it must pass a series of grueling tests to ensure it can handle the intense demands of racing. Since a single tire failure can cost a driver a race or even cause a dangerous crash, engineers leave no room for error. The first step in testing is visual inspection. Experts carefully examine each tire for any defects, such as small cracks, air bubbles, or irregularities in the rubber. Even the slightest flaw could weaken the tire and lead to failure under high-speed conditions. Next, the tires go through pressure and durability tests. Engineers inflate them to different pressures and expose them to extreme forces, simulating the conditions they'll experience on the track. This helps confirm that the tire structure can withstand the rapid temperature changes and g-forces of an F1 race. But one of the most important tests is heat resistance testing. During a race, an F1 tire can reach temperatures of over 100 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to fry an egg. To make sure the tire doesn't degrade too quickly, engineers place it in a high temperature chamber and simulate the intense friction it will face during a Grand Prix. A 
Another crucial aspect is grip and performance testing. Since F1 tires are responsible for how well a car sticks to the road, teams run extensive tests to see how they handle different surfaces. Special testing tracks and rolling road simulators are used to measure how well the tires grip in dry, wet, and mixed conditions. Finally, before they are sent to teams, some tires are x-rayed to check for internal defects that might not be visible on the surface. If a tire fails any of these tests, it's immediately discarded. Only after passing these rigorous tests can the tires be mounted on an F1 car. But what next? Ready for the track. Do professional F1 drivers test these tires? Now, if you're wondering whether professional F1 drivers test the tires before they race, well, the short answer is yes, but not in the way you might think. Unlike in other motorsports where drivers have endless opportunities to test different tire compounds before a race, F1 has strict rules on tire testing. Teams don't just slap on a fresh set of tires and let their drivers go wild on the track whenever they feel like it. Pirelli, the sole tire supplier for F1, is responsible for developing and testing new tire compounds before they are approved for use in a season. This testing happens months in advance, often during the off-season. Pirelli works with selected teams and drivers to gather data on grip levels, durability, and how the tires perform under different temperatures. These tests are conducted in controlled environments, sometimes on closed tracks or even using older F1 cars instead of the latest models. The goal is to refine the tires before they reach the actual race weekend. Once the season starts, teams don't get the luxury of private tire testing. They rely on limited practice sessions before each race to understand how the tires behave on that specific track. This is where professional F1 drivers do their real-world testing. During Friday practice sessions, drivers run multiple laps using different tire compounds to see how they perform. Engineers analyze this data to decide which tires will be the best choice for qualifying and the actual race. But here's the catch. Drivers can only test within the FIA's restrictions. They can't just run 200 laps in practice to figure out the perfect tire strategy. They have to make the most of the limited time they get. That's why you'll often hear drivers complaining about tire grip over the radio, since they don't have unlimited chances to get used to them before the race. So, now that you know everything about how F1 tires are made and what they're made of, head to the comments and tell us who your favorite Formula One driver is. And if you want to learn more about how things are made in motion, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in the next one.